We're going back to the moon. Aerospace companies United Launch Alliance and Bigelow Aerospace are collaborating to put a space station in orbit around the moon. The Lunar Depot plan is aimed at placing a Bigelow B-330 inflatable habitat in low lunar orbit by the end of 2022. ULA's Vulcan rocket will launch the B-330 into lower Earth orbit, where it will stay for about a year. While there, the habitat will receive supplies and get crew members rotated every few months. Two more Vulcan rockets will then be launched and their upper stages left in orbit. After propellant from one stage is transferred to the other, the fully fueled stage will attach the B-330 and propel it to its final position orbiting the moon. The companies claim the habitat can serve both as a platform for lunar business development and a location for NASA to conduct exploration and astronaut training missions. Want to live in space? SpaceX rocket sending first inflatable habitat to space. It sounds like a sci-fi dream, but the International Space Station crew is getting their first attachable, expandable room when an unmanned SpaceX spacecraft takes off on Friday. When SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket launches from Florida on April 8th, it'll be sending the Dragon cargo capsule to the International Space Station with 7,000 pounds of supplies. A prototype expandable space habitat called the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, or BEAM, will be included in the cargo. Air stored inside the BEAM will inflate the habitat to up to 13 feet long and a diameter of 10 feet. The BEAM will be attached to one of the docking ports on the International Space Station for two years. Crew members won't be living in the prototype yet. Instead, they will be running tests on its structural durability, as well as its ability to withstand variations in pressure, temperature, and radiation. Made out of Kevlar-type material, the beam offers protection from outside space debris, such as small, asteroid-like objects. Inflatable habitats could be essential to future missions to deep space. On these long journeys, crew members will need more space to store supplies as well as conduct research. If the upcoming beam experiments prove successful, the prototype will lay the groundwork for future space habitats. Mission complete. A team of scientists have finally returned to civilization after completing a NASA-funded isolation experiment to simulate life on Mars. The six-person High Seas Mission 5 crew lived in a dome on the Mars-like landscape of Hawaii's Mauna Loa volcano for eight months. The dome was equipped with a kitchen, bathroom, common area, and six individual bedrooms. Though not confined to the inside, the crew were required to don spacesuits whenever they went outside. While in the habitat, the crew conducted scientific research, equipment testing, and resource tracking. They also had to learn to prepare food using dehydrated and shelf-stable ingredients. Communication with the outside were subject to a delay of 20 minutes, the same amount of time it takes for signals to reach Mars from Earth. To better understand the psychological impacts of a long-term space mission, they were fitted with sensors that gauged their moods and monitored interactions with other members. The mission is the fifth in a series of six studies designed to help NASA select crews that can do well on an expedition to the Red Planet. The sixth and final High Seas mission will also last for eight months and is slated to begin in January of 2018. Nonprofit group plans permanent Mars colony. The race to Mars has begun. SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk says the company will send people to Mars by 2024 and he will reveal plans for colonization in September. Meanwhile, a nonprofit group also aims to establish permanent Mars colonies, sending the first group of astronauts by 2026. After Earth, Mars is the most habitable planet in our solar system. It has similar natural resources, a temperate climate, and an adaptable gravitational pull on its surface. Nonprofit foundation Mars One has developed a plan to colonize Mars. It has already selected six teams of four individuals and the first team will begin training next year. In 2020, Mars One will launch a communication satellite to the Red Planet. Between 2022 and 2025, a series of rovers will land and assemble livable habitats, which include a life support unit and a communication system. The living unit will house an inflatable living section and an airlock used by astronauts when leaving the sealed, habitable settlement. The unit will include materials for the construction of rooms, floors and electrical outlets and comes equipped with showers and kitchen areas. 
Additional units will arrive and be constructed as new teams join the colony. Attached to the living unit is the environmental control and life support system. The system will feed nitrogen and argon gas extracted from Mars's atmosphere into the habitable space as inert gases. Thin film solar photovoltaic panels will be included to generate electricity. The life support system will be equipped with heating units to boil and extract water from ice in the planet's soil. Once the astronauts have landed, it will also be in charge of water purification and removal of carbon dioxide from the living unit atmosphere. The colony's communication system will include two orbiting satellites, one around Mars and one around the Sun. The satellite orbiting Mars will only be interrupted when Mars is positioned between it and Earth. To counter the lapse, the second satellite orbiting the Sun will intercept and relay the transmission, allowing almost 24/7 communication with Earth. The colony will lose transmission only when the Sun is between Mars and Earth, and Mars is between its satellite and Earth simultaneously. Mars One will launch a team of four members every two years, starting in 2026. It will take a year after departing Earth for a team to land on the surface of Mars. The organization hopes to train and send new teams even after the initial six have colonized the planet. TV show gives a glimpse of life on Mars. The first home designed for humans to live in on Mars will be unveiled at an exhibition in the UK on November 10th. The exhibition of the show home ties in with a National Geographic docudrama that imagines colonists from Earth living on the red planet. The house would be constructed with Martian soil. The soil would be microwaved until it forms a brick. The bricks would be used to build the walls of an igloo-shaped dome, which would be around 10 feet thick. Recycled spacecraft parts, including a double airlocked entrance, would be used as the front door. Experts believe the dome would be able to withstand the Martian environment, including extremely low temperatures, micro meteorite impacts, a thin atmosphere, and cosmic radiation. An underground area would contain facilities such as a dining hall and laboratory. The colony would expand module by module until it forms a city termed Olympus Town. The exhibition at the Royal Observatory Greenwich in London coincides with the launch of the six-part docudrama Mars, which tells the story of an attempt to colonize Mars in the year 2033. Lockheed Martin unveils Mars Base Camp. Space engineering giant Lockheed Martin has released the concept design for a base camp that will orbit Mars. Lockheed Martin unveiled its Mars Base Camp design on May 18th, with hopes that it will put astronauts into orbit in 2028. The six-person spacecraft will have a living quarters, laboratory, solar arrays to generate power, and more. The Mars Base Camp relies on near-term technologies, equipment already proven or currently in development, including two Orion capsules currently being tested by NASA. The two capsules will link up with the larger habitat and laboratory modules. One of the Orions will also act as the brain of the vessel, providing navigation and communication systems, while the other acts as a backup. Lockheed Martin plans to launch the spacecraft in pieces to be assembled in space around the moon. With the base camp in orbit, astronauts would be able to better explore the red planet. They would be able to control drones and rovers on the surface of Mars in real time, as opposed to the 20-minute delayed connection currently used between Mars and Earth. Later, modules could be added to allow astronauts to land on Mars and head to the base camp for the return trip to Earth. The future is near.